Hello. Welcome to this video about managing roles and permissions with Oracle Linux Virtualization Manager. In this video, we will describe how to add local internal domain users and groups to the Oracle Linux Virtualization Manager system. We will identify how the local users and groups are created before they can be imported into the system. We will demonstrate how to add these users and groups and introduce the roles and permissions available for them in the Oracle Linux Virtualization Manager administration portal. We will look at the types of roles and see how to view the permission settings for the various roles. We will see how to create a custom role, assign it permissions and associate it with a user and group. Before a user can log in, the user must first be created and assigned permissions to manage elements of the system. Internal domain, also called local users and created through command line, are local to the overt database for the system. External directory servers, such as LDAP or Active Directory, can be attached and offer users to the system from external domains. A user can be standalone or associated with a group, which allows permissions to be assigned to the group from which the users inherit the permissions. Then these users and groups can be added to the system through the administration portal and assigned roles to have required permissions associated with them. Any changes to a user's permissions will be in effect after the user logs in again. Let's now look at working with users, groups, roles, and permissions in the administration portal. For this demonstration, the users and groups have already been created with the command line utility. If you want to see how the users and groups are created from command line, you can find another training video in this Oracle Linux Virtualization Manager series showing how to work with the command line utility. Administering users, roles, and permissions can be done from the administration portal, but adding new users must be done first from the command line interface. From our host running the overt engine, the overt-aaa-jdbc-tool command is used to add and manage the users and groups. I have already logged into the administration portal and we are looking at the dashboard. To add users to the system, from the menu bar on the left we select administration and then users. This brings us to the users screen. We can see there is already a default user called admin listed. At the top there are two buttons, the user button shows the users in the system and clicking the group button refreshes the screen to show a list of groups in the system with the default group listed called everyone. For now let's go back to the list of users by clicking the users button. To add a user we click on the add button. This opens an add users and groups dialog. The user and group radio buttons allow us to administer and add either users or groups from this dialog. We'll stay with users for now. The search drop-down allows us to search for new users that were added through the command line. Remember it's necessary to first add users and groups through the command line before you can add them to the system here. As I already created some users to the internal domain, we can leave the first drop-down showing internal. We will leave the second namespace drop-down showing an asterisk for searching all namespaces. The third box allows us to input a character filter for searching specific user names, but as I want any new users added, I'll leave it blank and just click the Go button. Now we see the four new users I created earlier, TRN user 10, TRN user 11, TRN user 12, and TRN user 1. Selecting the four users with their checkboxes, I click Add to add them to the system and then Close to close the dialog. Now in the Users list, we can also see the four new users. Now let's go and add a group. This time selecting the group button we get a list of known groups, in this case just the everyone group. We click on the add button to open the add users and groups dialog again. This time the group radio button is selected. Again I will leave all the drop down boxes and text box unchanged and click go to search for new groups. Now we see a new group that I created earlier through the command line called TRN group 10. To add it I click the checkbox beside it and then the add button. I click the close button to close the dialog window and now we can see the new group added to the list. In addition to adding the users through command line, I also use the command utility to associate the users TRN user 10, TRN user 11 and TRN user 12 with the group TRN group 10. After adding the users and groups through the add users and groups dialog, we can now also see the group membership for the added users. Here on the users list, I select TRN user 10 to see its details. From the tabs at the top, I select directory groups. And we can see the associated group name, TRN group 10. To quickly get back to the users list, I click on the users shortcut in the path at the top. 
I can repeat the process and see that the TRN user 11 is also associated. Click on its name, then the directory groups. Click on the users in the path to return, and I can check for TRN user 12 also. To show that only these three are associated with the group, I can click on TRN user 1, then directory groups. I see that this user has no associated group. Now we can look at the roles and permissions in the system. From the menu tabs on the left, I select Administration, then Configure. This opens the Configure dialog. First, we'll look at Roles. In the dialog on the left, the first tab, Roles, is already selected. We see three radio buttons to allow us to filter the types of roles we want to see, either All Roles, Administrator Roles, or User Roles. By default, All Roles is selected, so the window populates with all the available roles currently configured. Now, selecting Administrator Roles, the list refreshes to only show these roles. The second column shows an icon representing the administrator. I click on the user roles radio button and the list refreshes to only show user roles, as indicated by the different icon in the second column. There is also a lock icon in the first column which shows that these roles are locked and cannot be edited here. This was also present for the administrator roles. Scrolling down the list shows all the current configured user roles that can be associated with the user or group. Returning to the administrator roles, scrolling down shows the configured roles, for example, the super user and storage admin role. To see the permissions associated with the role, let's click on the storage admin role to select it, and then the edit button. This opens up the edit dialog. Here we see the name of the role, account type, the permission selected for it. We see only the storage domain option has its selection box ticked, and if I expand this by clicking the arrow, we see the ticked boxes showing the selected permissions for this option. We cannot change the selection here because the role is locked, as was indicated earlier by the lock icon. Click Close to close the dialog. Now we will create a new role by clicking on the New button. In the New Role dialog, we give the name New Storage Role and select Admin for the account type. I scroll down to the Disk option and expand the selections. To make a selection, we can select individual boxes for options. Or, if we select the option title, it automatically selects all the options under it. And if we select the disk option, it will select everything under it. After making the selection of disk, we click OK and a return to the list of roles. We can now see the new role in the list, and because it's not locked, I can modify it. I select the role, click the Edit button, and go to the Disk Selection. Expanding down, I untick the box beside Disk Profile section, and it removes these permissions from the role. I click OK, and that's our new role created and modified. Assigning or changing the permissions of a user is done by adding or removing the roles assigned to it. From the menu on the left, we select Administration, then Configure. In the Configure dialog, we select System Permissions on the left. This lists users with configured permissions through associated roles. We click Add, and it opens the Add System Permission to User dialog. With the same search options as the Add User dialog, we click Go to list all users. Selecting the Group radio button and clicking Go, we now get a list of any groups. But let's select the user's radio again, and Go button and show the user list. To change the permissions of TRN user 1, we tick the box beside it to select it and then use the Role to Assign drop down and find the Storage Admin role, clicking on it to select it. Clicking OK returns us to the user list and we can now see the TRN user 1 listed and the Storage Admin role associated with it. To show an alternative way to assign permissions, we click Close and return to the users list. We click on the username TRN user 1 and then the permissions tab at the top. We see the user's list of associated roles and here we see the storage admin role we just associated with it. To add another role, we click on the add system permission button and add system permission to user dialog opens. Expanding the role to assign drop down, we select our new storage admin role and to show multiple roles added, we also select the network admin role. We click OK and are returned to the list of roles. And now we see the network admin and the new storage role listed. Now let's remove the storage admin role from this user. 
We click on the role in the list to highlight it, and then click the Remove button. A pop-up confirmation dialog asks to confirm we want to do this, so we click OK. When returned to the role list, we see the role has been removed. Now we will assign permissions to a group by associating a role to the group. With the Group button selected, we select the list of groups. We click on the TRN Group 10 to go into its details, and click on Permissions. We now get the role list, just like we saw for users. We click on the Add System Permission button to get the same dialog as for users. Expanding the role to Assign dropdown, we select the Network Admin role and click OK. And the assigned role now shows in the list for roles for the group. In this video, we described how to add local internal domain users and groups to the Oracle Linux Virtualization Manager system. We identified how the local users and groups are created before they can be imported into the system. We demonstrated how to add these users and groups and introduced the roles and permissions available for them in the Oracle Linux Virtualization Manager administration portal. We looked at the types of roles and saw how to view the permission settings for the various roles. We saw how to create a custom role, assign it permissions, and associate it with a user and group. Oracle provides an extensive number of resources, which you can use to find out more about this subject and others. You can find documentation on Oracle Linux Virtualization Manager at the link shown. There is a comprehensive Oracle Linux curriculum available to support a full range of Linux administration skills for cloud, on-premise, and hybrid users. For more information or to get started in Oracle Cloud Infrastructure, go to cloud.oracle.com. And for more training on Linux on Oracle Cloud Infrastructure, go to the link shown here. That's the end of the video. Thanks for watching.